Hi guys, John Moore back with you again and today we're going to do an unboxing of the uh, Academy 135 scale Magach 6B Gal Batash. It's an IDF um, main battle tank, Israeli Defence Forces and I've done, I, I do know a little bit about this tank actually believe it or not, I've actually seen them. Um, Magak have a number of different variants. They start at the Magak 1, 2, 3. There is no Magak 4 for some weird reason, but there's a Magak 5, 6 and 7. Now the 1, 2, 3 and 5 are based on the uh, M48 pattern tank. All the different variants, the A1, the A1, 2C and things like that. The Magak M3, Magak 3, is uh, when they started changing things around and they put in a 105mm L7 um, barrel onto it, which is a, a British made barrel. Um, that was on the Magak 3 and then went down to the 5. Then the um, Americans came out with the pattern M60 pattern. The M48 was a pattern as well. The M60 is also a pattern tank. The M60 is an up, a more upgraded version of it. And the Magak 6 is basically based on the M60 pattern. All right, the 6B um, variant is uh, based on the M60A1, and the um, the Gal part of that, Gal Batash, it basically it's the Gal firing system, um, fire control system. The Gal, it's an Israeli Defense Forces uh, fire control system. It's the Gal system and also on the Magak 6B it has a 908 horsepower engine that they put into it and they changed the upgraded the armor and all that so that's enough really basically about the uh, Magak let's uh, open it up and have a look oh let's have a look at the box first anyway box art it's a uh, typical uh, Academy with our new green um, things on it rather nice picture uh, it could be anywhere, it could be Lebanon, although judging by the walls in the background, it's um, sort of the West Bank or uh, Gaza. Right, um, it gives you nice little uh, pictures on the side of the finished model, colours and things, different uh, positions. Uh, paint index and things. There's no real information on the outside of the box. Um, so, <laughs> let's open it up and see what's inside. See what we've got. Now, I only got this this morning. Um, I got it down to my local hobby shop and it was uh, 45 euro. Now, I was looking online and I was looking in uh, modelhobbies.co.uk and e-models which um, Thing. And they were both around the same kind of price, around 34, 35, um, you know, around that mark in sterling. And then with six, six pounds delivery brings it up to about 38, 39 sterling, which works out around 50 euro, 50 euro. So I actually saved a few euro by actually buying it in my local hobby shop. Another thing that we should do is we should buy more in our local hobby shops because it's um, if we buy so much stuff online and we're buying it from China, Korea and all around the world, our local little hobby shops will cease to exist. And um, for anybody new getting into the hobby, if you've got to go to a hobby, say, oh, I'm going to do a hobby. And everything you have to get for that hobby, you can only get it online because the little hobby shops are gone. Then our hobby is going to dwindle away, unfortunately as it is. It's going to stick with the people that are already there and they buy their things online. It's going to specialise it. But for new kids coming up, that start off the little 172 scale, go up to the 148, they might bring up themselves up to this and even onto the 116s. You're not going to start at a young age if you've got to go off and get things on the internet because they're the kind of things they're impulse buys. You're inside and shop at your daddy and he, he says, Oh, look, I used to make one of them. Do you want to have a go? And, yeah, okay. He really wants a, a video game, but you, you persuade him into one of these and then he starts and goes, Hey, I like this. If we don't support our local hobby shops, they won't exist anymore. And our hobby is going to suffer big from it. Anyway, that's my opinion, lads. You probably have some similar opinions to yourselves. 
Right, they've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six packets and the uh, tracks. In this we've got just two sprues. So, let's start with your scissors and open it up. As you can see, brand new, Spanky. Let's have a look and see what we've got. I just I just put this over here so we can, so we can look at the, we we can look at the sprues and see what see what we're, we're dealing with. All right, we've got uh, basket assembly, some side skirts and things. The detailing is actually very very nice. Nice little rivets and things. Some spare track. I presume that's more of the basket assembly. At the back. Pioneer tools. Um, yeah, they're, they're, it's actually quite nice. This is the L sprue. No, let's take a look at the back of them for the old uh, ejector pin pop out markings. There's some on this, but that is going to be on the underside. They're going to be on the inside. And even the ones that are on the inside, if you do actually want to fill them, if you look in, they're not actually that bad at all. Just see, can we zoom in there a little bit on that? And this is the sort of the worst on this sprue, if if you get my drift. Where are we? There we go. They're very, 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 very small, and they're very, very thin. So that you mean the slightest little, even they nearly fill with paint, the mine filler. So that's uh, the first sprue. Uh, we have this one. That's a sort of a protecting plate for the bottom of the hull, to the best of my knowledge. Some more sky scars. I love the little detailing here. That's uh, probably the applique armour. Loads of little bits. Oh my god. Loads of little bits. Oh, and we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight little um, hold eyes for tow cables pre drilled out and all. Look at that. That fabulous. The um, I don't know whether you can see it there or not, but the uh, the eyes are pre-drilled out for putting in your cable, which is a brilliant, very handy little idea. I mean, I do have a, a pin vice, but there are some people who haven't got pin vices, and it just just makes it a little bit easier. This is the M sprue. Nice detailing. Very little ejector pin marks and absolutely no flesh whatsoever. None whatsoever. I've been looking around for dates on these. I haven't found a single date on it yet, uh, so I don't know how old the, um, the casting is on this. Oh, lots of plastic. Oh, the danger now is I'd rip it open and lose something off it. Right. Our next two sprues. We've got, uh, thank you, my dear, a cup of coffee delivery. Great stuff. All right, we have a date here, and I can't read it. I'll have to get out my trusty magnifying glass. And we've got a date of 1993, made in Korea. So, 1993. It's an oldish set, but not that old, not too old. Um, the back of the hull. Uh, I presume it's Commander's Copula. Gun rest. The, uh, when it's in... Yeah... Loads of lovely little bits and pieces, no flash. Tiny little bit of flash there, actually, I must admit. Is it? Or is that just an extra little lip? It's just, yeah, it's a little bit. Not much, not much. Very, very little. Loads of tiny little bits. Simon Kemp would love this model. He likes all the little bits. Does our sight. Uh, Alright, we've got 250 cows here. We've got the barrel. It's a two piece barrel. And. With all this uh, protection and lagging on the barrel, 
hopefully that will go together easy because it's not one something that you can just sort of give a quick uh, rub sanding to. I think that um, it's uh, it should go together. I've never I haven't had problems with them yet anyway. So we'll start. Oh, nice little bits of storage. I've just noticed. Uh, it's got some wooden boxes, crates, some nice uh, detail in that wood grain effect on the hands of the rope, the handles. It's got a little stretcher. That is a very nice thing. It's got loads of um, jerry cans. No, that is dead handy. And it's got a figure here, one figure. And I think I spotted a second one, I don't know. It's got one figure anyway. We like figures. <laughs> we do now, we use them. There was a time when I used to uh, dread the things and just stick them into the stash box, ignore them. But uh, just like give them a go and I'm getting better, sorry, but surely. And like I was saying to young Simon Kemp there, you have to give it a go. You have to give it a go. If it, don't, if it comes out crap, then it comes out crap. But at least you give it a try, you know. When I started off mine, my figures, the first couple of batches of figures, were crap. I'll say it myself. I don't have to have anybody else turn around and say, well, they weren't the best. No, they were crap. They were crap. And started watching a few tutorials and things. And I said, ah, don't want to go do that. Just take a chance, take a leap, leap of faith, and go do it. And bit by bit, and all the little techniques that you learn from all the other guys... And they come out grand. Right, here's our main turret parts. Lower part of the turret, the upper turret, the shielding and the Piliki armour. We've got some uh, hitching points. There's handles and other bits and bobs. I'm sure that that gal fire control system is in there somewhere as well. What it actually looks like, I haven't the faintest idea, but I know about it. Uh, well, there we go. Uh, we've got more wheels. Ah, oh, yes, see, I told you there was a second figure. We've got two figures. So there's a suspension. And it looks uh, quite... Quite straightforward, and, you know, nothing, uh, nothing out of the ordinary. Um, yeah, I'm actually quite looking forward to building this. Some loads of little bits, little bits and pieces. I'm going to take my time because I got to get something to keep me going until I start the end build. I have a nice uh, thing in mind for that. When I pick out. Model. I've got a couple of little criteria that I, I kind of try and stick to. Uh, and basically is, one, I have to know the item. I have to know something about the tank. I've either seen one, seen it in pictures. Oh yeah, I, I recognise that. That's tip. That's point number one. Number two, not a difficult build. I look out for kind of a simple-ish build. Not too complicated. Not too many little small parts and things. Three tracks. This has rubber tracks. I like rubber tracks. A lot of people don't like rubber tracks. But a lot of the newer type rubber tracks are actually quite good. Okay, they don't have the little holes in them and things like that. And, and for highly detailed people, Pieces and people that like the really fine detail in the airbrush and things like that. When I ha when I ha by hand brushing, I I lose certain amounts of the little detail. So detail isn't it's important, but it's not that important to me. But I do like those tracks; they're actually quite nice. There's nice detail on them, and I don't know. I haven't checked the thing yet. See whether they're glueable or meltable. So there's the tracks for it. Uh, we've got the lower hull 
the upper hole. I was just looking at that there a minute ago. Quite nice. Uh, what much can you say about these things? It's got a bit of uh, rope there for making your cables. I won't be using that. I'll be making my own cables. Um, but yeah, it's a, a nice little quantity of plastic there. Uh, it should keep me busy. Alright, what else have we got inside in the box? We've got the usual um, tension, blah blah blah, read before use. Just safety instructions using glues and things like that and knives. Uh, check your parts and the guideline for beginners. I'm sure we all needed that at some stage. Um, what else have we got? We've got a uh, decals, decals, transfers, stickers. I'm using uh, Simon Kemp's um, thing there. I, I always call them decal, decals, but more and more people are calling them decals, and I find that I'm saying decals. I don't like the word decals, <laughs> but excuse me. So we go with Simon's decals, decals, transfers, stickers. Seem quite nice. Um, it doesn't seem to be. Yeah, very little um, excess, if you know what I mean. I, I don't know what the word is, but they're they're trimmed down. They're trimmed down quite nicely. Um, yeah. Another thing I was saying about my uh, little criteria they look for in models is uh, PE parts. I don't like PE. Photo etch. Uh, you know, I have to get some, and I have to start doing it. And uh, here we go. We've got a painting and decal placement. Pity it's not in colour. I mean, how, how can you get a painting guide in black and white? Especially this day and age. I mean, they can go to the quality. I mean, what, what would a sheet cost to have it coloured? Another couple of cent, maybe. <laughs> Not even that. Uh, and the instructions. Slowly running out of space here. <coughs> Excuse me. Got the colour callouts. They're for Humbrol um, Enamel and Acrylic. CSI, uh, Mr. Colour. Life Colour. Testers Model Masters, Enamel and Acrylic. Revel Enamel and Acrylic, Vallejo. And... That's it. Now, the main colour for the tank is a, is a colour called Sinai Grey. Now, if memory serves me correct, when I look at Israeli, um, any of the Israeli uh, armour that I have seen in Lebanon and in Israel, it, it's got a kind of a greyish, greenish, it, it, it's a weird colour. So maybe hope for that, that Sinai Grey, and with Mr. Colour, is just to making them up. Life colour actually do it, do testers. So I must uh, must try and get that. Anyway, step by step instructions. It's the uh, pull out form. Uh, nicely, um, nicely done. I've never had any problems with Academy uh, instructions. I find them quite good. They're uh, they're easy to follow, quite step by step. Um, yeah, other the multiple tracks. I use um, I use a soldering iron. Just get it up to heat and tap tap. The um, idea of trying to heat a screwdriver for one, you destroy your screwdriver, until you never really get it right. Never really get it right. A couple of times I've done it with a screwdriver, never got it right. So I'm using I use a soldering iron. Done in a second, and I've never had a problem with it. So, and a sprue map. So basically, that's it. Magach six B Galbatesh. Galbatesh basically meaning for the uh, um, the fire control system. It's an M forty eight or an M sixty patent tank. Upgraded and made better by the. Israelis and uh, yeah I'm looking forward to making it I'm going to make a start on that this evening um, I just want to do a couple of quick little shout outs not many not many at all 
Um, there's a couple of uh, new people that I've noticed on the um, on the thing on the scene. There's a, a young chap, Jacob Penzer Dry, eighty nine. Now I'm going to write their names on the in the description box. I don't know how to do link slides. I really am sorry, but if I just put up your name and what your channel is called, people can type it in and they can go to it or go to my page. Look in my subscriptions things. I've subscribed to these things and just click onto them. Give them a, a, a um, subscribe to them. They're they're up and coming, and you know yourself that the more subscribers you get, it. it, it it kind of helps build your build your own confidence a bit. So we got Jacob Panzer Dry eighty nine. There's Pierre Bergstrom. He's from Sweden. Nice chap. Uh, good sense of humour. Big man. Uh, Pierre. He's got some nice little things. Um, there's uh, Bruder Tech. He's doing um, an M seven hundred six command commando vehicle for the uh, Steve Mottram's M build. That looks quite nice. And I've looked at some of his other things. Very, very nice indeed. And um, today I got a comment from um, a chat. I think it's uh, Models Time 135. Now, obviously he's Russian because uh, he he commented a Russian word. I hadn't a clue. I couldn't read it. <laughs> but I just said thank you anyway. Um, I had a look on his site and he's got some lovely little bits and pieces actually. Some quite nice stuff. Um, so give him a check out. It's Models Time 135. And do you ever notice when you're checking around on the internet and you're thinking of that and you're model after model after model you start getting a kind of a headache thing? Um, my kids watch this guy on YouTube. Jack Septica is his name. Now it's Totally unrelated to the models, lads. I'm going off track here. And this guy definitely doesn't need a shout out from me. He's got over 11 and a half million. Yes, million. 11 and a half million subscribers. He's an Irish chap, uh, Jack Septi guy. But he's one of these uh, guys that reviews games and things, you know, video games and stuff. It's not, it, it, I don't even play video games, but my kids watch this guy and he is absolutely hilarious. He is one of the funniest people. And his channel is mad. Absolutely mad. And it was a nice break. And when I got back into the thing then, I found I watched his channel for about five or ten minutes. I had a great laugh. I'm back into the modelling again. And I, I really, it, it, it kind of broke the monotony. And it was like fresh back into it again. But uh, should give him, give him a check out. Even if it's just for the laugh. Jack Septic Eye. And he's got, a, a, there's a, someone did a song for him, and the song is called All The Way. It's had over six million views, this song, All The Way. And I can't hum, I, I'm humming it. Everybody around the house is humming it. So, I suppose you couldn't really call it a shout out with 11 and a half million viewers, but it's just something to take your mind off the uh, modeling thing, but staying on the YouTube track anyway. So, Mike McGach, 6B Galbatash, I'll be starting that this evening. Um, I'm going to really, really take my time and I, I'm going to see, I, I say that with every model, but I am with this one. I'm going to take my time and see what's the best I can do with it and hopefully I, I'll get three weeks out of it and which will be in time then for Steve Mottram's The M Build and I I, am, I think it's next week or the week after I'll be having the, the model I'm getting for that uh, in, which goes against all my criteria for picking a model. That's why I said it was unusual in the last video. Um, it's a Soviet TI missile tank. That's where the M comes in for it's in the missile tank. But it's a, a trumpeter kit. It's got PE photo edge. It's got uh, individual track links. Um, things like that that I wouldn't normally go for. And it's the type of tank I wouldn't normally go for. It. Uh, this was a tank that never went further than the first um, rollout, shall we say. There was no more variants made. They realised, oh, no, no, this wrong idea. So it's a rare one. So it's that's, that's going to be the one I'm going to do for the Steve Mottram's M build. Not this, which I was going to do. But this, I have this made in two or three weeks. And that's really, really taking my time. Um, so I want something that will... Take a bit longer for the for Stevie's build. 
it deserves it. So, I'll be getting started on this this evening. Uh, we'll be posting updates and things, the usual. So, until then, enjoy your modelling. Have fun. That's the main thing. Enjoy it. Have fun. Um, don't forget, support your local uh, hobby shop. Um, without them, our, our hobby will die off. I, I, I firmly believe that because if it goes down to a thing where we can only get our things online a lot of people for most of us yeah we, we, we'd be happy with that but for a lot of people that might be a bit too much hassle and our, our hobby will dwindle away without, and we'll be down to the big cities with the big model shops and the smaller towns and things with the small local hobby shop but Okay, they don't have an absolutely excellent selection, but they have a selection. We should support them. Um, so, that's it for my update, lads. Uh, bit of waffle. We always like a little bit of waffle. So, I'm going to enjoy my cup of coffee that Mrs. M just brought me in. And, uh, like I said, enjoy your modelling. Uh, stick a like on this if you want. Um, subscribe if you haven't already subscribed and subscribe to those chaps that I give a mention to the uh, names will be down at the bottom in the description box on this video thanks lads and catch you up next time